thousands is the correct setting for there for that exhaust valve. Fourteen. 13, 12, here we go. That's well big. Right, another problem is, is when I've got three of these caps, I bought a fourth one off eBay, but after serial number 14,000, so I mean, they made them bigger. And it's off a later model. That I'm doing this wrong, I should have nine down, shouldn't I? No, sorry, I should have eight down to get a roll of nine. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm, one goes down. What I'll have to do is just put the three in just now and then I'll wait a bit, see if I can find a fourth one. There's eight going down now so we can set one. Right, that's it down. I discovered another problem. I'll show you in a minute. Set it to 12 instead of 15. We'd, no, it is 12. They said exhaust 12, that's correct. 15 for inlet. So we've got exhaust, inlet, inlet. This will be the next exhaust here. Let's make sure that's tight. So that's the rotor, rotator cap, or sometimes they're called lash caps, into that one. So, right, exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust, that one. So before we do that one, that's number four, so we want number five to go down before we do number four. That's five down. Should be slack there, yep. Yeah. I'm hoping that if the first one's bang on, the rest should be. It's a big if. Give it a measure and see. No, we'll go around the other way. Looking zero that. See what we're getting on this one. I don't know if you can if I put it that way, you might not see it. That's coming in about 204, 205. It's 
not the best of Berniers. It was nine ninety nine or something off eBay. And uh, once I cleaned all the slides and put graph out on them, it actually moved without jerking. So that's about two oh six that one. Looking about gone over here. I should have just paid the money for a decent one. I mean, 96 quid. Right, that's coming in at 225. So, what I could do is try the other one, Let's see if it's nearer. And it's coming in. Try it again. I get this thing to zero. Wash two thirty. Two thirty and we said this was what Oh no, that's coming in. Pumpkins are reading here. It was 216, I think, before it decided to go 400 and something. Right. 808. What a pile of. Unfortunately, my really good rebrook one stopped functioning. It was bang on. Now it's now reporting it's 400 and something. So I'll have a place this thing. Zero. Try it again. Right, 221, 222, 222, would be right enough. And the last cap's 220, so that's yeah, 1 to 3000, so we'll be okay with that one again. Let's put some, uh, some of this lubricant on. This is just a lubricant. Probably seen me use it a few times. That's a pretty good stuff. Sticky as anything. It just keeps everything lubricated till the oil gets up. Right, I'll go around the other side and <coughs> trip over something good this way. I've got to bring the camera holder down on me. So it'll be 12,000s again for the exhaust valve. Right, so if that's four, five's down, isn't it? No. No, yeah, so I need to put it down to set it.
I don't know anything a bit more than engines. Well, I do sort things with computers in for my work light, but that's boilers. And believe it or not, even Argus have got computers in them nowadays. That's electric ones, we don't do them. Just oil and gas, I do. Mostly gas boilers are computerised now as well. I'm afraid I'm a wee bit analogue. Right, so the next exhaust would be... Exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust, exhaust, so number five. So we need to get four to go down. It's about 40 years since I messed about with an engine. <coughs> My Mark II Cartina. Drove it to Middlesbrough when he rings in it for Edinburgh. Used quite a lot of oil. Got there and then tipped the engine up in the bay, put in new rings. And got it going again. That's my sad lamp, I use it for filming because it's quite good light. It's probably the dirtiest sad lamp you've ever seen. Being in here. Zero. Zero. Okay, let's try this one. So that's saying 216. I'm just a bit sweet on it, this bit in there. Thank you. 
and about 216. Um, not saying 223. Seven, a bit big. What I might do is open up this one and see if it's if it'll fit on that one instead. I'm missing one. I have another one but it's too big I think. I don't think I'll use it because it might pop the collar to it. So if anybody knows where to get the smaller of the two lash caps you could leave me a message. This is my robot one, but uh, the display's gone on it. Just eyeballing it really to see what the gap is. Quite big. I suppose we could lock it and put a feeler gauge in, couldn't we? I think we've got a magpie or something in the roof. That's quite a lot. We've got a fairly large gap there. I can tell you now that's more than one to three thousands. It's about a sixteenth an inch. That one's even worse. Mm, that's a thirty-five. That's not going in, let's try twenty-five. Twenty three here. Nope, I've locked it. Sixteen. Just picking random numbers to see if we can get anything that's it's more than 16. Or is it? Well, actually, it's less than 16 because that needs to be a little bit. I'm going to try 10. I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to do it, but if it works, why not? Right, I think that's about eight thousands there. That one's bigger. It's more like ten. So we would need seven thousands on top of that. My idea was to use a set of feeler gauges and try and punch out 
to uh, I've got old valves so I could use them as to hit it and that would give me the correct thickness rather than buying shim stock and it's definitely bigger than eight Whether I can punch it out or not, I'm not sure. that one so I might go with this one leave that one stay in there about the same so we would need seven Seven thousands. So I'm just going to switch the camera off for a minute and I'll go and see if I can punch out a, <laughs> Things don't often work, but I drilled a nut out the same size as the valve and buttered it through a seven thousandth feeler gauge. So I've now got a seven thousandth shim for this. Whichever one was the seven thousandth. Was it this one? Oh. I've got another set of feeler gauges, so I'm not too bothered. And there you go, one seven thousandth feel shim in there, ready to go on top of the lash cap. And they're steel feeler gauges, and so they should put up with a pounding, I hope. There's still a gap of three thousandths ish. Alright, I've discovered another problem as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's come back around that side. Right, don't think that's going to work again. Let's break it off. Cheap set of filler gauges, anyway. So, in an earlier video, which I don't think I've shown yet, I set the tappets without them. Nasty question, should I or should I not? I think I should have. Okay. So this is one I bought off of eBay, um, but it's 14,500-ish, it changed to this bigger size from, there's one, there's one there, so it's a good bit, I wonder if it would work, It'd rattle about a bit I suppose, but would it matter, still on top of the collets, That when it goes down, there's always pressure on it. It's never gone out past the collets, so I wonder if that would work. It's a good bit higher, I think, as well. Yeah. 
yeah it's a good maybe a sixteenth, thirty second an inch maybe higher, I don't think I'm putting that in I'll just keep hunting for a real one so this is the configuration it had when I took it apart, one missing either that or it's shattered or something, I don't know Right, so what was that one already? This one, isn't it? Nope. This one, which is number. Force doing a wee bit, so it's kind of far away. So 12,000 of an inch. And we didn't destroy it, so we've still got it. I've two sets of these filler gauges anyway, and I'm sure there's another set kicking about somewhere. There you go. If you don't have a shim, use a feeler gauge. Okay, that be bad, yeah. The noise this thing's make, I don't think you'll hear the tappets anyway. Eight. I never could figure out the rule in a six cylinder. Or right, maybe you still use a rule of nine, I'm not sure. Maybe some of you guys know. Happy with that, right? That's the more tightening, I think. Just make sure we didn't miss any. I'm going to show you my other little problem. Bear with me. A little bit of light around here. Actually the push rod that bent, I've got a replacement which is probably off a new attractor but it's the same, same length anyway. But I think I see why now. Right, do you see that rod? It's very close to that, the cylinder head there. 
the rest of them are not as close so whether I need to put a spacer in there to try and move it over a bit or not I'm not sure so the rest are quite far away well relatively far away compared to that one now no number three is not the one at that number two is the one it buckled so it is clearing but not by much but mother thought was loosen off the rockers and see if I can move it up a bit even a couple of thou would make a difference okay that's all for just now folks so that's the three lash cups I've got on and I'll just keep looking for a fourth of the right size so I do have water in it as well and it stayed at the same level oh, don't want that going down in there this is with the dampness in here at the weekend when there was six inches of water in here. I mean, wait till it dries out and then I'll just brush it out. So, we're going forward. Not in any hurry. So we've got the Polaris here, it's a great little thing. A bit more modern, it's computers. <laughs> it's got computers in it, so. So, that's all for now then, folks.